Welcome back everybody. Tony is here. Tonight I'm flying from the John Wayne Airport in Ontario, California to the San Diego Airport. It'll be a bit of a long flight. I'm flying the Cessna 208B Grand Caravan. Uh, recently switched to it from the 172 Skyhawk and I really like it. Um, looks like it's smoky out but I think, uh, I think it'll be okay once we get some altitude. So let's go ahead and get started. I've already set up autopilot. Let me take off the park brake. And let's get going. Okay, nice smooth lift off. I'm going to get a little bit of altitude. And then start steering in the right direction. And I will hand off to airport uh, to the autopilot once I get high enough. John Wayne Tower KH247 continue for south departure. So I've turned the flaps off, or I should say I've taken the flaps up. We're getting some speed now. I'm trying to just get our course online, or in line. Head up to maybe a thousand feet before I turn it over to autopilot. It's very smoky, can't really see anything, but you know, with the Garmin, it's pretty easy to tell what's going on. Alright, so let me switch hands so I can use the mouse. That ought to work. It should begin steering us in the right direction. Yep. Alright, I've got it full throttle. Uh, at some point I'll have to pull back on that once we get closer to our 5,000 feet target. I love the shadows on the dashboard with the sun. Let's go outside and take a look Xbox controller. Alright, so I'm going to head outside. The moon looks pretty up in the sky. The clouds are hugging the ground. And then if we go out and look in this direction, we should see the sun getting close to setting. Leaving the John Air, uh, John Wayne airspace, and so heading towards uh, San Diego. Copilot is contacting SoCal Approach. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. It's very pretty view. Yeah. Just reset the barometer, which is why the altitude suddenly jumped. Right, I'm going to look down through these clouds. Oh, that's very pretty. I had some stuttering problems the other night when it was completely cloudy. I'm running with the graphic settings beyond ultra. Everything is maxed out as it can possibly be. I think maybe the all the clouds were slowing it down. Don't seem to be having that problem now. Could also have been a, a delayed download or something, but it's hard to say. Okay, we're quickly approaching our target altitude. Pilot will start leveling off and then I'll have to pull back on the throttle. We've got 59 nautical miles to go. Uh, if I can get going fast enough, it should take us like a half an hour, something like that. Okay, we're still close. 
climbing. So that's a little confusing. Let me look and see what autopilot says. Okay, I think what happened is I turned nav on, but I didn't turn flight level change on. So let's set that back on, and let's let off the throttle and descend a little bit. So we got about a thousand feet higher than I had planned, but no big deal. Again, the moon looks really pretty up there. I see what looks like another craft over here. I have tags turned off. They're a little ugly, make it difficult to view things, so it's kind of hard to tell who that is. I don't know if there's a way to tell. Um, sometimes you can see people on the VFR map. I see the guy right there, but who knows? Can't click on it to find out anything about it. I'm trying to drop th throttle a little bit and let the plane have a chance to continue dropping down to 5,000. I think autopilot uh, thought it was going too fast or something. I often have strange problems with autopilot and I figure it's mostly not software bugs and mostly just my inexperience. But sometimes I've seen them do very crazy things like suddenly set the trim to minus 100%, um, which obviously doesn't work. Alright, so we are supposedly in altitude hold mode, so I'm going to push up the throttle again. You can tell when this indicates the altitude, it's that you know that the autopilot is now holding. around a little bit more before going back inside. I think we can afford to go faster. Let's, uh, let's push the engine up. outside the Xbox controller isn't working for some reason. Uh, let me go back inside and see if it works in here. No. Climb and maintain 5,300 feet. Expect okay. it for a minute. I can still use the mouse to look around. I'm going to power down the Xbox controller and then power it back on see if that makes a difference. I love seeing all the reflections from inside the cabin here. Alright, let's see if the controller is... Yeah, it's behaving okay now. Not sure what the problem is. Okay, let's go back outside. First, let me reset the view. And then go back hey, outside. Hey, 247, you are leaving my airspace radar service. Terminated. Clock ONE 200 Frequency change approved. So we're holding at... 5,000. Got a good speed Frequency going. Change approved KH247. Around a little bit more. SoCal approach KH247 is type Cessna Caravan, 15 miles northwest of Kilo November X-ray Fox Request flight following. KH247 SoCal approach. Squawk 5114. Squawk 5114 KH247. Trying to get those nice shots for the clips at the end. I don't know why the microphone is picking up so many pops this time. Did do something about that? Um, yeah, that's very, very cool. I think I need to reduce the sensitivity of the I wonder if these antennas are related to the VOR navigation. Maybe this one back here that looks the same. Go to an extreme 
wide angle view. Shouldn't be doing that. Okay, you have to remember with the Xbox controller that only the right joystick is usable without affecting the plane. I hit the left joystick and you'll notice that it, uh, I guess, changed the ailerons. So maybe which makes sense, left and right. Um, and then autopilot quickly adjusted for that. Now if you switch to the drone, you can see where the insert button is on this new alien mercury. hit insert, you switch to the drone, and then the left joystick moves you around and you're a lot freer to you know, find these interesting shots and look at whatever you want, leave the plane and go off and do something else. I like this idea of seeing if I can get the sun to show through. connected to the plane, which is convenient. We can just, you know, go as far away as we want. Um, there's no zooming with the mouse reel in drone mode, but of course you can go anywhere you want. Alright, let's see what that sunset's doing. Wow, that's interesting. These colors. I can see the reflections off of the back of the propeller, I think. Is that or maybe it's just the shadow. Yeah, I'm seeing the shadow of the wing on the spinning propeller. was also good because it gets rid of all the instruments. I mean, as long as you're paying attention, and I should quickly look at engine speed. That's the thing I screw up the most. Okay, we're good engine speed wise. Let's go back outside. Yeah, so you get rid of the instruments. I still got the airport marker, but that's fine. Doesn't have to be perfectly photographic. All right, I'm gonna switch off the drone by hitting insert and then go back inside. Stick. The water looks very pretty down here. Um, so we're somewhere between the Los Angeles area and San Diego. I'm not familiar with this water. I've driven to San Diego a few times, but don't really know much about this body of water. Uh, we can see it actually on the garment. Let's look at the VFR map. Okay, that's as zoomed out as it'll go, so uh, let's see. Maybe I need to be a little closer so we can actually see it. Okay, yeah, there's, there's the water. Not sure if this has a name. Uh, might be a, a bay of some kind. This can be a nice view to pop up, almost like you're, you know, lifting your head up over the dashboard. You can see what's going on. You can see the nose of the plane and the important instruments all at the same time. Only water to see out the window, but the the shadows are impressive because not only are we seeing colors and the occlusion. It's also reflecting off the dirt on the glass. That's amazing. Oop, just hit the left stick again. That's also the problem when you're on the inside. Not a problem if autopilot can take over. If you hit it too violently, autopilot will shut off and then you'll have to take over yourself.
kind of wish I could go sit in the back. Prior to patch 2, there were a bunch of external views and you could look out over the wing, but I'm not able to find those anymore. If I go to camera, external, external view, there's nothing, nothing showing. So, I'm not sure why that is. Obviously a pretty large plane. It's very stable. It's probably very comfortable inside. It feels a lot smoother than the 172, although the 172 is easier to fly. It took me a while to get comfortable flying this, landing it. Let's go back inside where the views are prettier. And I think I will swing around and catch the sun. Reflecting off the airplane for a while. Okay, we're back after that musical interlude. I hope you enjoyed that. Let's go back to the default view. Um, I wonder if I can easily go see what the sunset's doing. Yes, just looking to the right. Okay. Uh, it'd be nice to actually watch it go down. I think it'll go down while we're in the air. Just have to check back in a couple minutes. Like I said, I've got all the graphics on Beyond Ultra. I've got an RTX 2080 Ti graphics card. I've got an overclocked plus 180 megahertz. I've got a memory clock um, plus 750 megahertz. Intel 10-core processor is also overclocked to 5.3 gigahertz. So everything is overclocked within factory, you know, limits. Up the power limit, up the voltage limit, and the temperature limit. So it seemed to do a good job. The stuttering the other night, I, again, I think that might have been more network related than graphics related because the graphics card just seems to hum along. People have complained about cooling issues with Alienware. I haven't run into that myself, but 
I also haven't overclocked things you know, to the extreme possible, so it's possible I could go further with better cooling. Something I may experiment with at some point. Okay, I'm going to go back inside because we're getting close to the airport. I want to start descending. Uh, I want to bring us down to 3,000 feet. So, go up to the autopilot console and dial down the altitude. And then we're going to want flight level change. And we're going to want to let off the throttle, let the autopilot handle it. KH247 contact SoCal approach on 132 decimal 2. 132 decimal 2 for KH247. SoCal approach KH247 4900 feet. Approach. Continue as planned. Altimeter tree, zero decimal, zero one. Every time I hear the, uh, them talk about the barometric pressure, I hit B, and then you'll notice that the current altitude will change slightly. All right, so we're almost half of the way down to 3,000, and then I'm going to go to 2,000, which will be about right for landing, so probably. KH247. This will be my first time landing transition. Bravo, at, at San Diego. Let's take a look at what the sunset is doing. Oh wow, look at that. That's really pretty. It's definitely going down out that window. Cleared through Bravo airspace KH247. That's really pretty. Alright, so our speed right now is based on the fact that we're descending down to 3,000. So as soon as the autopilot levels off, I'll have to go to some more throttle if I want to keep the same speed. And now I want to go down to 2,000. So let's take care of that, dial this down. You can do this safely because this is just a data input. It won't do anything until you take some action. Uh, for instance, change it's going over here and click that all right and then again pulling off the throttle will give it a chance to descend and get to that back, get, get back to that speed and I believe the landing pattern HUD is about to show up It'll probably be off to one side, and so we'll have to steer away from the center line of the airport. That's been my experience. Okay, so again, I need to watch altitude and throttle, because as soon as we level off, I'm going to need to give it more throttle. Uh, maybe not too much, because I do want to slow down tower, as I get close to the airport. One miles northwest with whiskey to land. So we're level enough now. I'm gonna just give it a little more thought. I'll put it at the center point. I'd like to look to the left and see what that looks like. Make left base runway nine or KH two four seven. All right, there we go. Um, it can be a little hard sometimes to judge the landing pattern, but it does look like I need to turn left and then curve around to the right. So I am going to get back into position in the cockpit. A real pilot would probably not move around like this, but this is all simulated, so it doesn't matter. Now when I took autopilot off in the 172, I noticed that trim stayed where it was, and it seems like when I do that on this airplane it reverts trim, so I just have to be careful to make sure I deal with it. Okay, that doesn't seem bad. This actually seems fine. Okay. I seriously need to slow down though, so let's start slowing down. The turn will help. Uh, lowering the throttle will help. KH-247 cleared to land runway 9 Wind calm. 
cleared to land runway 9 or KH-247. Alright, you need to judge where that opening is, but it's in this direction. We'll see it in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and put the flaps down one step and adjust the throttle. means we're making a major change from our heading. I need to look up what that chime means. I tried to, and I couldn't find any information on it. But that seems to be the context. Alright, so again, having trouble seeing where the mouth opening is. Oops, okay, let's just level off and then, okay, a little high. Drop throttle and start turning. Looks really pretty out the left side. Miss San Diego, I haven't been there in years. I always enjoyed visiting. Okay, the air seems really calm. This feels very smooth. Almost feels a little bit too easy, but I think we're good. And so we're just going to want to head over, get into the pattern. Watch our speed, be ready to hit the throttle if we lose too much altitude too fast. Compared to the 172, this plane is really a lot easier to fly. It might be because it's so big and heavy, it just feels like it's more forgiving uh, for bad micro adjustments than the 172 was. I'm still going too fast. I will drop to the second flap level when I get closer to landing. So we're going to want to keep it below around 82, I guess. Something like that. Okay, we're going a little slow, so I'm going to give it some thrust.
Yeah, I figured we were going too fast, so I let off the throttle. Okay, so now I'm going to put the second flap down. Or put the flap down to the second level. Drop throttle even more. I need to really push forward hard on the stick at this point. Plane's really going fast. Okay, so that that uh, smoothed out. So I'm gonna keep it a little slower on the airspeed, just make sure I don't lose that lose so much speed that I start stalling. Of course, uh, landing is stalling. So you're really trying to do a nice, easy, slow controlled stall. Okay, we're going to have to give it some thrust because I'm going to lose some going around this turn. And it's getting a little bumpy, but that's okay. It's just my abrupt turning. We're okay speed-wise. we might be able to just glide in like this without any thrust. Uh, although I do see it dropping, so... And as I'm controlling the plane, we're losing some of that energy. Alright, so then what I want to do is just... Hold off as long. Oh, well, we already we're already down bouncing. Okay. It's gonna hold off as long as I could before reaching the ground. I still don't have a good sense for how close I am when I'm doing this. Uh, I was probably supposed to turn there. I wonder if we need to tell them that we've landed. Okay, well anyway, we have landed, so I assume at some point we will get contacted. It's an international airport, so it can't be, you know, unmanned at the moment. Um, and besides, general aviation is probably way off on the side somewhere, so we might be going in the right direction. Getting some stuttering there. There we go. I don't know what was going on there. All right, well, at some point, I'm going to just have to turn because they're, they're really not contacting us. This looks like a place I can possibly go. Yeah, usually by now ATC would have contacted us and remind us about switching to ground and things, and so I'm not really sure why that's not happening. Let's take a look at the ATC stuff again. One, two, three, decimal, niner, KH247. There we go. Request, oops, request taxi to parking. Lindbergh ground, KH247, taxi to parking. Taxi to General Aviation Parking using Taxiway Charlie Charlie 1 Cross Runway 27 Bravo 1 Bravo. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking via Taxiway Charlie Charlie 1 Cross Runway right, 27 so Bravo I 1 Bravo KH 247. Ah, there we go. There's where we go. Okay. Lindbergh Ground Southwest 2363 three requesting pushback. I forgot San Diego Airport was known as Lindbergh Airport. Southwest 2363 pushback request accepted. 
hearing a new um, traffic controller voice I hadn't heard before too. So it's, it's nice to hear the variety. Of course, I suppose that's dependent on the language packs I have installed on my, on my machine. I just have the default Windows 10 for you know U.S. English. Okay, I think we're going a little fast. I have to say, I was really afraid the first time I decided to land and stay inside the cockpit. I had always been going outside, landing the plane like I was playing a video game. Um, and my problem was not being sure how close I was to the ground. And what I realized was, it doesn't matter how close you are to the ground. As long as you're near the tarmac, and you're going at a good angle, and you're on the descent, you'll, you know, you'll touch down at some point. So you don't really have to worry about how close you are. You do have to worry about your speed and your angle, and that's really, that's really the main thing. Not to throttle all the way down, and, and yet we're still going a bit fast. You're supposed to keep it below 20 knots. So I was wrong about the direction, it's like we're going clear across the other side of the airport to General Aviation. Let's take a look outside for a minute. Yeah, I'm going too fast. I always forget to put the flaps up in the Okay, there's our parking right there. Very convenient. Okay, good. Did run over the man? I uh, haven't done that yet. It'll probably happen sometime. So we've landed. Let's uh, set the parking brake. Let's turn off the engine. Roger, generic. One Romeo. shutdown procedure. Not sure where the cabin lights are. Be nice to be able to see. I'll have to figure that out sometime when I can actually see inside. But I do know that the master, master battery switch is right here. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video.